This is a grade 9 IGCSE vectors question. They're not straightforward at all, but you can learn how to do these and uh, they do follow a fairly common format. And this sort of question has now come up a few times in IGCSE papers and you can expect to need to be able to do this sort of question if you want a grade 9 or even a, a, a grade 8, depending on your strengths elsewhere. So, pause if you haven't already done so to, to study and absorb the question. But we first need to make sense of the information that's given here. Um, and some of that information is already on the diagram, but the AB equals 2C is not. But the line below tells us that uh, because P um, divides up the line segment A to B, we need to, you know, we could draw on um, 2C like that, but it kind of obscures where P is there. So a better way to do this is to capture the, the ratio of those two lengths as well, 3 to 1, and recognise that we are dividing uh, this 3 to 1 ratio suggests we need to divide the line up into four pieces. And three quarters of the line effectively is A to P, and the last quarter of the line is P to B. So therefore, uh, our two vectors here, a uh, quarter of 2C is a half C, so half C goes here, and three halves C must be the other section of that line. So you can see that we add those together, we get the 2C that we uh, expect to have from A to B. Okay, that's not a grade 9 thing to do to have to do, uh, but pretty much the rest of the question is. Now, this the whole problem hinges around the location of Q. If we knew the location of Q uh, exactly, then we would know the answer to this problem. But it's hard to pin down. We need to think of it as both a fraction of the line O to P. So some this is some fraction, some unknown fraction of that long line. And similarly, we need to think of A to Q as a fraction of A to C as well. That's what this hinges around, this question. So, firstly, thinking about the, uh, the, this section O to Q, well, let, uh, O to P rather, let's actually write down the vector O to P. That's pretty straightforward to do. Um, we just need to go up here and along here. A plus 3 over 2C. And then we need to capture this idea that O to Q is a fraction of that, an unknown fraction. Well, O to Q is a fraction of O to P. I'm calling my fraction lambda. So the value of lambda might be a half, it might be two-fifths, it might be three-fifths, it might be it's unknown. It looks on the diagram like it's about a half, but we don't know that because of this. Oh, so substituting this result into here, we have this result. OK, good. That's a good place to get to. We're going to now do something similar with the A to Q section. So A to Q is a fraction of A to C. Well, we start by writing down A to C as a vector. Again, that's quite straightforward. It's just go to there and then to there. So that's negative A plus C. And then A to Q is a fraction of A to C. This time I'm using mu. I can't use lambda again because it might not be the same value. So I'm using mu to be my fraction, my value between 0 and 1 that's currently unknown. And then sub again substituting this result into here, we have this sort of final result. It's not a final result this time because really we want O to Q because that's what we had here. So let's add one more line here, which takes us all the way from O to Q. Well, that's easy because we know A to Q. So O to Q, we just need to do that bit first and then our previous result, A to Q. So vector A takes us up to there. And then we just add our previous result for A to Q, which is the mu bit. OK, so I've... Um, I've just brought this down here just to show that because we've now got two expressions for O to Q. And those must be equal to each other because it's the same Q in both places. So I'm literally going to grab this and set it equal to this. And we'll do that up here. Great. 
OK, that looks complicated to solve because there's a lot of letters in there. But because vectors A and C are not parallel, you can use a little device here called equating coefficients. Now, don't be intimidated by that phrase. That's just the name of this procedure that we're about to follow. The actual procedure is quite easy. Um, and it's just basically saying that because these are incompatible vectors, really, you can't do a particular number of A vectors and end up with a number of C vectors. And that's simply because they point in different directions. If you do some A vectors, then you've come off this horizontal line. Um, you can't get back to it, really, without just subtracting what you just did, which just takes you back to the, uh, the point. So, yeah, A and C are incompatible vectors. So if you do some A's, you can't undo those by doing some C's. And um, that means we can just look at this complicated looking equation um, and say, well, how many A's have we got on this side? And that must be the same as the number of A's we've got over here. And similarly, the number of C's that we've got over here must equal the number of C's that we've got over here. But that's a little bit difficult to do when this is in its factorised form um, or partially factorised form. So let's expand it. OK, that's an easy thing to do, just expanding brackets. So that's the left-hand side. Uh, here we need to subtract mu a and then plus mu c. OK, that's all just, that's just expanding brackets. Let's, let's now equate coefficients. So thinking about the a's and thinking about the c's separately. So on the left side of this equation, we just have lambda a. So I don't need to put the a in. I'm just how many how many a are there? There are lambda of them. So that's that lambda there. Equals because there's no other a's here. They're c's, and then we just need well there's one a there and subtract mu a there. If you want, you can refactorize that. But I don't think we need to. So one minus mu. That's one a minus mu a. And with the c's, we've got 3 over 2 lambda over here. And over here, we've just got mu. And that's a pair of simultaneous equations, which we can now solve easily. In this case, you can just add the two equations together, because we've got negative mu and positive mu. Um, and they'll cancel each other out. And when you do that, you can go through the process of that. But that just gives us lambda is 2 fifths and mu is 3 fifths. So we've finally solved. Um, to find the values of mu and lambda. And all that remains now is to interpret that um, to solve the original question, which is to find where Q is, but um, finding it as a sort of ratio of those two lengths there. Well, um, that's the equation that sort of where, where we introduced mu. So now that we know mu, so let's just rewrite that equation um, here, but with the known value of mu. OK, and then just need to interpret that. So, well, a to q to a to c is 3 to 5. But the question says a to q to q to c. So it must be, if we divide that into five parts, three of them are here and two of them must be here. So the answer must be 3 over 2.